Hi, I'm Mikhail Golovnia, Senior Scientist at Salford Systems. In the next series of videos, I'm going to talk about uh, the concept of cost functions, which are directly related to the concept of uh, performance evaluation of uh, machine learning models or data mining models. The reason why this is important is because there are many different ways to design a machine learning algorithm and there are many different ways to judge the performance of uh, whatever the modeling situation that you're facing. Now in particular in a, say a regression setting there will be this important topic of how to evaluate performance of your predicted response. Then we can move on to classification problem when you have a set of uh, binary responses. So again, you need to know exactly what is it that you are evaluating and how the model is constructed. So we're going to cover a lot of those different topics and a lot of different issues. And uh, there will be a little bit of math, a little bit of intuition. And as the discussion progresses forward, eventually I will also show how everything is tied up in our software applications, what kind of cost functions are available, what cost functions are being used by what algorithms, and so on and so forth. So let me get started. And uh, what I'm going to do first is uh, I want to introduce, in general, the, problem, uh, the supervised learning problem, what it does, and how it can be represented in mathematical terms. Now, from the formal point of view, a supervised learning problem can be defined as uh, starting with the collection of n p-dimensional feature vectors. These are x sub i's, x being a vector. Each vector has p components. And the collection of observed responses, y sub i. And i goes from 1 to n, n stands for the number of observations, and sometimes people call them examples. What it means in practical terms, though, is that you start by having a, a flat file or a data set. The data set has uh, observations or records, examples. They're counted one, two, three, etc. And, and here you have columns one through p and that's your feature vectors x. And again, the columns could be, let's say, if you are trying to model house values, the individual columns here could be house size, neighborhood, location, age, things like that. Uh, in addition to that, and that's what makes this learning problem a supervised learning problem, there is also a column of y, or observed responses. And typically, this is just some kind of set of numbers, either on a continuous scale or categorical scale. The exact specifics will vary depending on what you're working with. And again, in our case, uh, say if you're modeling house values, uh, Y will be the price on the house, uh, whereas axes will be those things that I already mentioned. The goal of a supervised learning problem uh, the ultimate goal of the algorithm, of any machine learning algorithm in this supervised learning case, is to construct what we call a response surface or a hypothesis. I mean, depending, there's a different areas of machine learning. Some people call it hypothesis. That's why it's an H of X. But it's basically a function, a real valued function defined on uh, the set of feature vectors X. And that real valued function can be used to draw certain conclusion, conclusions about y. Now, in the simplest case, the function can be used directly to predict the value of y. And that is a typical situation that happens in the regression case, for example. Uh, but there could be more complex situations. So you could have a, a function, h of x, that uh, predicts some kind of score, and then y has to do a, a, y is a binary outcome, say yes or no, fraud or no fraud, and then this score associated with h of x is used to make certain predictions about the binary outcome y. But the point 
to be taken here is that in any supervised learning problem, one way or another, there will be the response surface h of x constructed by the machine learning algorithm, and it can be visualized as uh, essentially some kind of function f of x. So suppose in my case, I have uh, p equals to, so I have only two columns in my feature vector, which so is x. And suppose this is, uh, I'm working with predicting house values, and on, on this axis I have house uh, size, and here I have house location. So all that the machine learning algorithm is trying to accomplish is to build uh, some kind of mathematical rule that associates values to each feature vector. So mathematical rule that computes response surface h of x for every conceivable value of x. And that is, in the essence, what the supervised learning problem is all about. Now, the next important question is, how do we solve supervised learning problem? How do we find the function h of x? And in order to do that, we need to introduce the next major component. And that is uh, the subject of this entire set of, of, set of videos. And it, it is called the cost function. So the cost function is a very important topic. Now, the cost function, uh, in general, describes how well the current response surface h of x fits the available data on a given data set. I mean, usually, I mean, you can talk about it in either abstract terms or concrete terms. In abstract terms, you would talk about probability distributions, condition distributions, and so on. But in concrete terms, you always have a data set, you have a set of observed responses, and you just want to come up with a measure of how well the response surface fits the available data. Now, just to give you an example, again, suppose I have only a uh, univariate set of features x, and here is my response y. And suppose I have a set of training examples that can be plotted like this. And now I'm assuming that somehow the machine learning algorithm did its magic and fit this uh, particular response surface, h of x. In this case, it's just a curve. So the purpose of the cost function is to essentially evaluate the goodness of fit of this h of x. Uh, so for example, in this case, if we have an h of x that looks like this, and let's call it h1 of x, it will be evaluated, and the cost function will return the value of j1. If, on the other hand, you had uh, somehow fit a different solution here, let's say this is a response surface h2 of x, then again, once we feed that uh, response surface into the cost function, we would have gotten a value j2. Now, logically, it's kind of clear to us that the j2 is worse than j1, and therefore what we will expect from a, a very, fairly well-defined cost function is to have a j2 greater than j1, just because this is the type of cost uh, that it corresponds to a somewhat inferior model in this case. So what usually happens in all of these discussions is that whenever we introduce a cost function, there is always that implicit assumption that the smaller values of the cost function correspond to a better fit. And therefore, the machine learning goal, in a very generic terms, can be defined as construct a response surface h of x such that the cost function is minimized. And again, I'll skip all the details because, uh, in, in terms of what data set do we should we consider, because usually you want to construct a cost function that's minimized on a train sample, then you have presented with a, you are presented with a set of alternative models, and then you look at the performance on a test sample or cross-validation sample, and then you also confer it, uh, confirm it on a follow-up sample. But the one thing to understand is that any cost function essentially takes into account two important uh, characteristics. On one side, it looks at your observed 
responses. On the other hand, it looks at your projected responses. And then, depending on what data set you have, it takes those two inputs, those two columns of data, and wraps them up into one specific numeric measure of goodness of fit. Now, the actual specifics of the cost function will differ depending on the situation, depending on the type of modeling uh, problem that you're dealing with. And what we will do in the follow-up videos, we will start introducing different cost functions. So, for example, in regression, it will be one type of cost function, and uh, classification will be different types of cost function, and so on and so forth. Now, what makes the regression case is so interesting is that in regression, the function f of x, uh, h of x, this uh, response surface function, is usually directly interpretable as the predicted response. So, in other words, when I'm dealing with predicting continuous response y, and uh, I'm asking a machine learning algorithm to construct the response surface hypothesis h of x, my usual assumption is that I'm going to interpret this h of x as a direct prediction of y itself. That makes the regression problem intuitively somewhat easier and simpler to understand and talk with, even though at the mathematical side it could be uh, somewhat more elaborate. And in the follow-up video, we will do exactly that. We'll start with the regression problem and see what type of cost functions can be introduced there.